What is going on, guys? Monty Webby here, back again on Saturday. We get a nice nine-game slate on tap for tonight. I got to narrow down for you with my money six, six of my favorite plays on the board, two pitchers, three hitters, and a value batter. We got some good upside of the pitcher spot, some home run ability at the hitter spot, also some stolen base abilities. So go ahead and drop a like in the video before we get going. If you're ready to win some money here tonight and to show some support to the channel, let's try to get over 80 likes on this video. On this video, That'd be greatly appreciated. So let's get into it. First up, I'm going to go with Kershaw here. I think he's going to be pretty chalky, honestly, in the slate against San Diego. Um, so if in GPP, if you want to pivot it off him and kind of hope he doesn't pitch as good as he should in this matchup, I wouldn't fault you, but in cash games, and just in general, I think he's going to be very safe and reach that upside that we've seen from him over the last two games. His stuff has been very, really good. And he's coming off a game where he got 28 drafting points. But the thing I like even more is that he was very efficient in that with 88 pitches. So that means he won't be um, like as tired coming off that game going into San Diego here. Um, and he pitches normally a lot better at home. So 20 drafting points on average is even better like last year and throughout his career. And against San Diego, this was, I'm pretty sure, when he's kind of going through that rough stretch. And he still had a really solid game against this lineup. Six innings, only allowed two hits, and got 5K is good for 25 drafting points. So in this matchup, with his strikeout stuff seeming to be finally back, he's generating more swinging strikes. Um, I think he honestly could approach like 9 to 10Ks in this matchup if he does go deep enough here in this game. Uh, and that should generate him around 30 drafting points here. They only have a 186 batting average against them and a 26% K rate and 104 plate appearances. And Vegas is absolutely loving Kershaw in this matchup. They're only implied 2.2 .2 runs. So um, Kershaw, a really good safe option, I think, back into his elite form that we've seen over the last couple of years. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. Really safe bet, but like I said, I think his ownership could be pretty high. Um, but since we're paying up for him, we're going to go with the cheap guy, the second guy up, Sony Gray here at 7,500. I mentioned the same matchup before, like a f maybe two months ago or a month ago, when he was kind of on the brink of being taken out of the lineup. Obviously, we know he, took, he was taken out of that starting pitch in the rotation. Uh, he was put in the bullpen, but now he's coming out here because they have a double header. So maybe he can try to prove his worth. They try to slide back into the starting rotation. I doubt it, but um, really good spot for him, I think, here, honestly. Like, we've seen him on the year. He's really struggled in Yankee Stadium, but on the road, he's been a completely different pitcher if you look at the splits. Only a 230 batting average allowed and a 3.4 ERA. So, like, his away numbers are pretty damn solid. 17 drafting points on average. He did have one really bad start against Baltimore, but that was in Yankee Stadium last time. Um, I think he got like, yeah, he got negative eight drafting points. But the two games on the road, I'm pretty sure we can see it here. This is the game, yeah, right here. Six innings, he got eight Ks, and he was good for 31 drafting points. So on the road, I don't know what it is with this guy. I guess he maybe the nerves kind of flow at Yankee Stadium. But on the road, I think he'll be very uh, confident here going against a weak Baltimore lineup. Uh, that does strike out a good amount, so we definitely can get some Ks here. And they're only implied 3.7 runs, so Vegas is liking Sony Gray a decent amount. Uh, and his, his uh, relief work has been pretty solid. Uh, he got three innings, four Ks against the White Sox, um, three innings, two Ks, um, 3.1 innings against Tampa Bay, two innings, one K. Like, he's not doing too bad in the bullpen either, except this game against Texas. Uh, but that was at home again, like I said. Uh, so Sony Gray... I think he'll uh, have a good opportunity here to return some good value in his price tag. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there. This is my second pitcher. So that leaves you with 38, 37 remaining per hitter. So definitely doable to fill out. So for my first guy, I'm going to go with Edwin and Canarcion here at 4,600. A solid matchup going against Phil Meyer, who's been absolutely destroyed against right-handed batters this year. He's allowing 2.5 home runs per nine and a 50% Hard hit rate to righties. So Edwin and Canarsie are the most powerful righty in this lineup. Uh, he has a 261 ISO against right-handed pitchers. Uh, he can definitely go deep. And we got some good hitting conditions here in Kansas City as well. It's going to be 93 degrees uh, with 10-mile-an-hour winds blowing to left center field. So the ball is definitely going to carry well in this hot temps. I mean, in these hot temps. And then uh, also the wind carrying the ball. So at 4,600. Uh, Cleveland has a healthy run total over five runs too. Uh, so Edwin can definitely get some RBI upside and like have a really good game like we've seen from him his first game back from the dl he went deep twice so i'm gonna go ahead and lock him in there it's my first hitting for my second guy similarly to Encarnacion, just coming off the dl 
And Altuve, he's putting up some solid numbers. He was looking like he's getting back to that form we saw him in last year, at least recently at a home run, and got a stolen base. So you love to see that for drafting scoring. So in this matchup, he has the ability to do both of that thing, going against Jaime Berea, who's been really bad against right-handed batters. He's allowing 2.2 home runs per nine to them. And also, uh, he hasn't been stolen on that much, but Altuve is much more prone to steal against a right-handed pitcher. I think he has like 13 steals against righties. And last year, he had over 20 against righties. So he can definitely get a stolen base here. Um, Houston is another team, I think, that could put up a good amount of runs. Uh, they looked ver really good last night and then the other night against Seattle. They're putting up some good run totals. And their lineup is finally healthy with guys like Correa, Altuve, um, Bregman up at the top. So they're pretty damn dangerous here. And they are kind of fighting for their playoff lives so with Oakland kind of flirting with them in that division. So a 4,500, really good value. We know that Altuve has it upside. Um, we've seen him around 5,000 over the last like two seasons. So at 4,500, like the value, I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there in a good matchup. And now that we got got uh, not that much money left over, we're going to go with some cheaper guys here left over. So Ramon uh, Lariano at 3,700 is going to be my first guy for Oakland. He is towards the top, I mean, to the bottom of that lineup. But this guy has shown really good pop uh, in the AAA and in the majors so far. He's only played in uh, 16 games, but he's gotten three home runs. And he's uh, just hitting the ball really well, really hard contact off the bat. He's going against a left-handed pitcher in Gonzalez, who really struggled in his debut. Um, I thought he was going to be solid against the White Sox, but he couldn't even do that against that lineup. So that's pretty, um, makes me kind of worried about him. So against an Oakland lineup that uh, doesn't really strike out too much, uh, they really are good against the lefties. So I think Ramon can get some quality bats here with some guys on base. At the bottom of the lineup, they are implied 5.1 runs. And, uh, yeah, he's been really solid. And I think he can honestly go deep here again. He does have an outside shot of getting a stolen base. He does have some speed as well. Uh, so I think, honestly, Gonzalez could only go, like, four innings again here. Uh, and Ramon has shown quality um, ability against right-handed pitchers as well. So I think he's good against both uh, pitchers, honestly, like a lefty and a righty. Um, his numbers in the minors actually were a lot better or, like, a sizable amount better against lefties. So, like, his ability so far against righties and how good he was in the minors against lefties kind of makes me think he's good against both sides. So I think in this matchup, can definitely do it uh, even if they go to the bullpen. I don't think Minnesota's bullpen is that scary, especially if Oakland has the lead. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my fifth guy of the money six. And for my final guy, we're going to go with Ortega here at 3,500, going against Anibal Sanchez. Uh, this play is really just for stolen base ability. Ortega has some solid speed. He has four stolen bases in 14 games, and he already has a stolen base against Sanchez. He went two for four with a double and a stolen base, so he can definitely get a hit off uh, Sanchez, and if he gets on first, He's going to be stealing a base because Sanchez is one of the e one of the easiest guys in the league to steal on. And Ortega definitely has solid speed on first base uh, in that leadoff spot. So I think he can honestly um, get a stolen base here and just give us some solid value at 3500 Like if he gets a single on a stolen base, you're already getting really kind of value at eight drafting points. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my final guy the money is six. So that is it. you got Kershaw, Sony Gray, and Canarcion out two bay. Lariano and Ortega. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to slap a like in the video before you head out if you did. Um, and it really helps me out. So just if you can do that, thank you. 80 plus likes would be greatly appreciated. And also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm not sure why you wouldn't by now, but definitely do that to get these plays every day. Uh, also, we got NFL drafting picks coming right around the corner. So you want to stay tuned for those picks. Maybe I'll, uh, I did do some waiver wire videos yesterday. I mean, last year, so I'll probably do that again. Uh, I might do some other videos during the week and stuff like that. So good luck uh, on the slate, guys. It's nine game slate. You can follow me on Twitter at MoneyWebby for any updates if I have to update these plays. Uh, you can you can uh, tweet at me any questions you might have with guys in your lineup, or you can comment down below in the comment section here to get any kind of questions out of the way. So good luck, like I said, and we'll see you back here again next time.